What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for everyone who's doing the K-Cup pre-order at coffeebrandcoffee.com. I'll leave a link for that. Greatly appreciated. So, Twitter misses its revenue target, but not just Twitter. First of all, Snapchat as well. There's a huge peelback going on in social media revenue, whether it's people dialing out, or it's a reduction of spending or some combination, which is obviously more likely. You know, people probably only have so much doom and gloom that they're willing to consume. Hey, look at that. Uh, each particular week. And so they're putting their phones down. It's also kind of the first summer where everything's like wide open again. So maybe that has something to do with it. People are out doing things with their lives, but it's difficult to say. Musk, of course, has reacted now to Twitter's blame for the second quarter revenue miss. And we're going to get into all that after a really quick word from this video's sponsor. Huge shout out to this video's sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so they can call themselves a lord or a lady officially. In return, they commit to plant a tree with every order and protect the beautiful, pristine woodlands of Scotland. Established Titles makes an absolutely amazing gift, and a person could officially get their name changed on documents. Their title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate and an official certificate with a crest. Established Titles is currently having a really big sale just for you, my subscribers. You can get an additional 10% off any purchase you make with the discount code the quartering so click the link below go to establishedtitles.com slash the quartering and use promo code the quartering to save an extra 10 percent today so musk reacts to twitter blame for a second quarter revenue miss twitter said it faced 33 million dollars in costs during the quarter related to musk's 44 billion dollar acquisition Elon Musk, though, fired back on Twitter after the social media giant partially blamed its second quarter revenue miss on uncertainty surrounding the Tesla chief's executive spending $44 billion acquisition with literally the best line ever, quote, Elon Musk, I, I, I should point out, quote, I'm rubber, they're glue. Not Jerome Paul wrote, Elon, Twitter's blaming you for missing their earnings, FYI, I'm rubber, they're glue. The social media giant reported a total revenue of $1.18 billion to the second quarter, including advertising revenue of $1.08 billion. So 99% of their overall revenue is advertising, no matter how much they're trying to sell you Twitter Blue and all their other products. Uh, economists surveyed by Refinitiv were expecting a total revenue of $1.32 billion, so off by $300 million. Twitter said... It faced $33 million in costs during the quarter related to the acquisition. In addition to Musk's deal, the company cited adverse advertising industry headwinds associated with the macro environment. Now, I will say this advertising, like on YouTube, for example, is way down this month. Way down. I mean, my views are down, but just a little bit. They're pretty regular, but I would say the earnings is down like 30%. Uh, for this, you know, looking at the same views this time last year, which might be why YouTube is telling us privately, you really got to get your, you know, you really got to push these memberships. You got to push memberships. I think they see that coming too. And they know creators are going to take a huge dip in their revenue. So they want us to be live streaming more. Uh, they want us to be pushing memberships. I think it's all related. I think that they know that their advertising dollars are going down too, and they need money. They need to take their cut out of the YouTube memberships program. And they need to take their cut out of Super Chats. I think that's basically what's going on. Earlier this month, of course, Musk announced that it would be terminating the deal, Twitter claiming in its material breach. However, even Bloomberg has said, no, Elon Musk is not to blame. Why did I type car in there? No one will ever know. Uh, he, he just can't be. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, the entire industry is down and we're going to take a look at what's going on with Twitter and Snapchat too. But this right, no Musk is not to blame for Twitter's slowdown. Investors seem to be similarly missing the big pictures on Snapchat. In times like these, in times like these, you learn to love. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, it's easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. 
Take Twitter, where this morning blamed uncertainty related to Elon Musk's acquisition as a factor for in its second quarter slowdown, along with industry, quote, headwinds associated with the macro environment. This sounds a little as if Twitter is playing the to the anti-Musk crowd. The company's 3% revenue growth in the quarter, excluding the contribution from the prior quarter of its recent divested Mopub business, is pretty much what you would expect in this economic environment, given how Twitter has performed relative to other internet ad companies in the years past. The easiest comparison is with Snapchat, which reported on Thursday night that its revenue growth slowed to 13% from 38% in the first quarter as advertisers pulled back amid rising inflation inflation and other challenges. Twitter's revenue growth in the first quarter was 22%, so a 19% point range drop doesn't seem out of line. Moreover, recall that in the second quarter of 2020, when the COOF lockdowns briefly crushed the ad business, Snap's revenue growth slowed to 17% from 44% in the first quarter. Twitter's revenue dropped to 19%, having risen 2.6% in the first quarter. Twitter's ad performance certainly lags Snap, but that's nothing new. From 2017 to 2021, Snap's revenue growth averaged 60%, while Twitter's averaged just 16. Sure, Snap was a younger company, so it could be expected to grow faster, but over the same period, Facebook parent meta platforms averaged 34% revenue growth. Twitter's de- de- desultory performance, of course, is why the prospect of a must takeover held appeal. It's uh, it's a bit much for them, Twitter, to now blame Musk for its weak, its weak performance. It's not just Twitter, where it's easy to lose sight of the forest for the trees. Investors may be overreacting to Snap's results as well. Snap warned in May that, quote, macroeconomic environment had deteriorated farther and faster than anticipated when it reported first quarter earnings in April and projected a 20 to 25 percent revenue growth in the second quarter. Snap stock promptly dropped 43 percent to just below $13 after recovering in recent days to above 16. The stock dipped more than 35% to just $10 on Friday morning. At this price, Snap is trading at 3.2 times forward revenue, according to Bloomberg data, right in line with Meta Platform and only a little ahead of Pinterest. Yet analysts expect Meta to report next week flat revenue for the second quarter, while Pinterest is expected to post 10% growth. In other words, both companies lag Snap and growth, while Pinterest faces more fundamental questions about user growth. I've never actually been on Pinterest. I don't I don't really know what it is. Um, it's like a p- picture place. And if you see this article in the Financial Times, Twitter and Snap results set shutters through digital advertising market. I'm telling you as a YouTuber, and I don't know how many of my other YouTube you know buddies will be transparent about their earnings, but like it's down. Like YouTube is telling me, bro, you got to push memberships. And like I do members are super important because that money stays static either members or people who people who like join my subscribe star that's the money that i try to live on because the youtube ad revenue is so unpredictable and it's so far down i'll probably be down like 40 percent year over year this month uh with similar views this july versus last july um and this is why you don't you know buy lamborghinis and you don't uh buy Rolexes when, when you YouTube, because the future is not in your control for the most part. After the steep sell-off in tech, this, tech stocks this year, Wall Street has braced for signs that surging inflation and higher interest rates are starting to eat into demand for the sector's public products and services. Twitter and Snap may just have provided some of the first evidence that that moment has indeed arrived. Weak earnings reports from social media companies delivered a one-two punch that reverberated through digital advertising sector on Friday, with parent Facebook's parents Meta already facing what could be the first ever revenue decline when it reports quarterly earnings on Wednesday. The news fed fears that wider economic slowdown is starting to bite. Digital advertising often acts as a leading indicator of the online economy, making it the canary in the coal mine for the entire consumer internet sector, sent Brett Thill, an- a- analyst for Jefferies. Snap's earning disappointment, which came on late Thursday, was the second time in two months the maker of disappearing messages app, Snapchat, had sent digital ad sector into a tailspin. Its stock tumbled 43% in May when it first did it, and then it went back on Friday another 39%. The sheer speed and scale of the deterioration in Snap's business shocked analysts. 
Second, even more worrying, according to several analysts, was news that Snap had seen no growth in the current quarter. Wall Street had penciled in an 18% expansion for the period. Following the Snap shock that came hours before in the face of turmoil caused by Elon Musk's uh, backing out of the Twitter deal, the Twitter disappointment caused less surprise, though it underlined a wider slowdown. Shares of Meta fell 8% in response, while Alphabet parent of Google dropped 6%. Twitter share price, by contrast, edged up a little bit, which I thought was interesting. People might still be holding on. But yeah, the slowdown is real. Like, people are buying less, so companies are advertising less. Uh, and they're advertising, they're paying less for advertising, meaning creators are making less money, advertisers are making less money, platforms are making less money. That's why they're like, hey, get your, get your users to sign up as members, because we know it's coming, and it's going to get worse. I would predict that uh, we're going to see a similar drop as content creators in August and September and maybe into October this year uh, until things correct. I mean, obviously, the holiday season is still a big ad spend in general for most people, but who's to say what the future will hold? And uh, that's why you try to live within or below your means uh, so that you leave yourself a little bit of uh, money for when times get like this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do click that red subscribe button down below. We'll talk to you again real soon.